introduction, main body, conclusion. When you are writing, particularly written task two, you need to have an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. Think about this as a Big Mac, if you like. The top of the burger bun is your introduction. Then we've got the meat of your, of your main body paragraph. That's your two patties or your one patty and your Big Mac. Then underneath, and this is so vital, you must have your conclusion. You've got to have that bottom bun on your Big Mac. Otherwise, you pick up your Big Mac, the whole thing falls apart. No conclusion, no chance of getting a seven. It's that simple. So your introduction is a paraphrasing the title. That's great. And a clear thesis statement. What's a thesis statement? I'm going to make this as easy as I can. A thesis statement is a statement that smart people could disagree with. Okay, so if, for example, you say um, Apple products are overrated, mm, that's a good one. That's, that's okay. That's nice. If you say Apple products are very important in the world today, it's not helpful. It doesn't do anything. But when you say they're overrated or they're underrated or receive unnecessary criticism, you're expressing an opinion straight away. And you've got to build that argument. That's what an IELTS examiner wants to see. Somebody presents an argument and then argues their point. Now, please, it doesn't matter if we agree or disagree with what you are saying. It's how you structure it and how you write it that we're marking. Let me add one quick thing here. This will horrify you. This will horrify you. How long do you think it takes an IELTS examiner to mark written task one and written task two? Very quickly, just in the side box, if you can put down how long you think it takes an examiner to mark written task one and written task two. We've got three minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, I'll tell you, as an experienced examiner, I can probably mark a written task one and a written task two, 30 minutes, five minutes through it. Can't say, this is very interesting. Now bear in mind, I will be given 400 scripts, 400 written tasks to mark in three days on top of my normal job. So I will spend on average marking written task one and written task two combined four minutes. So I have to be able to read it and understand everything straight away. I will read a sentence, I won't understand it. I'll read it again, if it's unclear the second time, if it's unclear what you're trying to say, both grammatically, structurally, and your point, I just can't reward it. Now, this is very important too, and I know I've gone off topic already, but this is very important too. You do not start with 100% and we take marks away from you. Otherwise, why would we mark it? You start with zero. And I try to give you as many marks as I possibly can. You start with zero and I'm trying to give you marks. If you make a mistake or something is unclear, I can't give you a mark. I don't take marks away. I just can't give you a mark. And normally, and I say this from nearly all arts examiners, within the first paragraph, we've got a pretty good idea what band score you are. Now you want that first paragraph to be quite spectacular and quite, quite good and clear and easy to read. People say, I'm using lots of big words and complex vocabulary. Well, you know what? You may have a great vocabulary, but can you apply it correctly? Can you apply it relevantly? You've got to be able to use the words in a sentence. Memorizing a dictionary, so what? Can you apply the words properly and relevantly? When you're writing, you, and, but let's go back to the introduction here. Introduction. Paraphrasing the title, great idea. Clear thesis statement, that is an argument which other people can disagree with. Your introduction should also include uh, your topic sentences. Now this is where planning comes in. When you've planned your paragraphs, you'll have a topic sentence, which is basically what you're going to write about in that paragraph. It's a nice idea if you can drop them in the opening introduction as well. I will talk about this, this, and this. And then your first paragraph is this, your second paragraph is this, and your third paragraph is this. That would be sweet. Your main body, it says, organizing your paragraph with the topic sentence, supporting ideas, giving examples. Maybe make it easy like this. Point, evidence, analysis. P. You've got to pee all over your essay. That sounds weird. I wish I hadn't said it. But you have got to pee all over your essay. P for point. What are you trying to say? E for evidence. How can you prove this? This is your supporting ideas. 
A for analysis. Analyze. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What, in your opinion? In your opinion. Again, you don't need to, for example, if you say men with red hair are deeply unattractive and very unfriendly and always angry. Okay. Now, I may disagree with you violently. It doesn't matter if you come up with some exceptionally good arguments about why red haired people are terrible. I won't go, oh, that's a zero. I'll go, wow, that's a very interesting set. Of, I'm looking at how you structure your paragraphs, how you structure your points, and how you come to a logical conclusion. I think they should eat less carrots and their hair will be less red. Beautiful. What a mad conclusion. But what I'm saying is your actual ideas aren't what we're interested in. It's how you present those ideas. Coming to the conclusion. Now, you can be very clever with the conclusion if you want to get a seven, eight, or nine. If you want to get a seven, your conclusion should be something called the transition sentences. When you write a paragraph, you'll have a topic sentence, your point. You'll then have the evidence to support your point, and you'll have your analysis. Now, as you move on to your next point, have a transition sentence in there. Connect the two ideas. For example, we're saying uh, ginger red-haired men are uh, very angry all the time. Uh, you can say uh, an example of this is... Uh, a British politician called Scargill, who was constantly uh, arguing and shouting in the street. Um, and then you could add a link to this. Of course, the angry gene could be linked to um, the fact that these are Celtic people, which is the old Scottish people from literally thousands of years ago, who fought lots of wars. So you're making a link there between an angry modern person and then you're linking it to historical figures. That's a really rough example I've just thought off the top of my head. But the point is, you'll transition. This is not just a modern day situation, it's happened in the past. Next paragraph's about the past. Take those transition sentences and put them in your conclusions. Now your conclusion is summarizing your argument, absolutely. Offering a suggestion to move forward, so important. So important. You will not solve the problems that are presented in the title. You will not be able, it'll say something along the lines of um, uh, modern day devices such as tablets and the internet and iPhones are making us antisocial. Do you agree or disagree with this? It's not, can you solve this problem? Because probably in the nicest possible way, you can't, but you can have an opinion on it and that's what we want. And then the conclusion, you're not giving the answer to the question. You're giving your opinion and your argument, and then you're saying what needs to happen next. You need to suggest something for the future. Maybe you should limit yourself to three hours a week. Maybe we should stop offering Wi-Fi in public spaces. Maybe cafes and pubs and bars should stop offering Wi-Fi so people talk to each other more. Or maybe Wednesday and Thursday nights can be Wi-Fi free nights at a bar. There is an idea. Think about an old one used to be smoking. And your conclusion could be uh, smoking is antisocial and passive smokers inhale the smoke and they die too. Your suggestion could be ban smoking in, in pubs and bars. That's something that's actually happened. Your thing could be, um, as they do in Britain, we can't sell cigarettes openly. They literally have doors, cupboards, which they have to open and you take the, and, and the service person takes the cigarettes out and then they close them again. These are ideas about how you could stop people smoking. That's what we want in the conclusion. But you see that introduction, main body, conclusion? You want to plan those out before you write them. It's horrific when I see somebody just, the minute we say go, they start writing their actual essay. We look and we go, there's a four. It's that simple. Sorry, can we change slide? Um, I'm just looking at the comments.